Aloha. You're watching Ericsson Enterprise Wireless Demo Series, where we get hands-on how-to with the Ericsson experts. And today's a pretty special show. I've been looking forward to getting my good buddy, Joe Wagner, on the show. He's the Senior Product Manager for Security. How's it going, Joe? Doing great. How are you doing, Peter? I'm doing fantastic. So today we're going to, I want to do, kind of have you walk through the VPN and APN replacement with a zero trust architecture, which is available in our NetCloud SASE solution. And so first off, before we get into the demo itself, can you give our audience just a quick explanation, sort of the differences between VPNs and APNs in case they're unfamiliar? Absolutely. Yeah. Typically, we'll start with VPNs, then we'll go to APNs, and then we'll kind of understand how the two worlds collide in our use case here. So with a VPN technology, typically what we're going to do is we have some, some network that we need to protect over an untrusted path. In this case, it'd be something like the dirty internet or just anything that we have less control over, and we don't want anyone uh, understanding what's going on in that network without us wanting to make sure they understand. Then on the private APN side, if you're unfamiliar in the cellular world, the non-technical answer I like to give is think of it as a secret handshake that your, uh, your SIM card and your modem have to join a special network inside of the carrier or the operator network. And so once your router and or modem tries to connect to the cellular world, if they have that secret handshake, they will be brought into a private network isolated from everyone else on the internet. However, it's not encrypted. And so wow. a lot of the times what we see with these private APNs is not only do they want it isolated from the rest of the internet, but they will also put some VPN technology, making sure if there's extra, that double layer of security. Right. Yeah. To the demo. So I see we're in NetCloud Manager here. Yeah. Absolutely. So everything involved in NetCloud SASE or NetCloud Exchange will all live in our NetCloud Manager platform, giving you that single pane of glass to manage everything. In this simple use case, what we have is we had a private network with a bunch of traffic controllers. And the reason we went with that model is because that was the only, only security posture we felt comfortable with three years ago when we did this initial implementation. Hmm. Well, the city's grown a little bit and we've had to expand all the different intersections. And some of these intersections actually don't have coverage from our initial, our initial private network uh, carrier. So we needed to find an alternative that was also secure. And we searched and we searched and we were already familiar with Cradle Point and NetCloud Manager. So we figured we have to have a solution somewhere. And so the, the traffic pattern for this network will be from the traffic site, what we call, which is just the intersection that houses the traffic controller up to our data center through our primary and or secondary service gateway because we have a, a redundancy in the case that we have an issue with the primary, we can always fail over to the secondary one. So what does that look like in practice? Well, we have our network built. You can tell that we have that same primary device and secondary device. And if we click into this network, what we'll see is that we have some connected sites already because this is an already existing network. And if we look, we can go to our service gateways, get some additional information on the WAN IP versus some of the management IP. We can also look at the amount of memory so we can see if there's anything creeping so we can take and investigate. And we also look at any of the throughput going through our system at any given time. Then from there, what we have are a concept that we call a site. And don't think of a site, don't overcomplicate it. Just think of a site as anywhere that we're going to put a, an Ericsson router that needs to communicate within this network. The other piece is that this is all built on zero trust principles. So in the old days when I'd have to go configure an IPsec connection, I'd have to go set the LAN IP, and I have to make sure I understand what my pre-shared key is. I'd have to have a lot of pre-work even to get to this point of onboarding my traffic controller. Yeah. The other thing is we have two, two sites that are automatically built anytime you create a NetCloud Exchange network. External resources, think of that as anything that lives out on the internet. Say it, I had a different use case where I wanted to block facebook.com. I could define that as an external resource and then say any of my sites cannot go to facebook.com, blocking anything out on the WAN side or the open internet. 
At the same time, we need to have a path into the data center, which is represented by this internal resources site. And if I click on this site, we'll see that we've already built a bunch of resources and a resource is just something that we can identify or care about on our network. And a resource kind of comes in two flavors. Flavor number one, it's an IP address. As an old network engineer, I know it, I love it. And then we also can support FQDNs where we can start taking advantage of what we call name-based routing, where we start taking the IP address out of the equation and we start referencing things through names like traffic controller one, two, three, or we could even go to traffic controller at first and main. And so kind of elevating that IP type approach to a more name-based or a, a less technical approach to this solution. And to the, to the common individual, these would simply be like applications or SharePoint or file shares or something that's within the corporate environment. Exactly. And just giving you more of a name or more common way to access what you care about instead of having to do some old mapping between an Excel doc and, and what I called it. And so we're trying to elevate that, that ease of use for our customers. Yep. And again, so if we just look, there's no difference if I expand out the details. This is just the IP address where my traffic controller server lives that my site will need to reach to. And now let's go add my site. So the first thing I need to do is just click add. I'll give it a name. We'll just say uh, 9th and Main. Maybe that's the intersection it's going out. It's relevant to what I care about. So I want to make sure that the site, I when I look at it, I know what I'm looking at as opposed to just an IP address again. Got it. Your primary DNS and your secondary DNS servers, these are not needed in this topology because I have nothing at my site that I need to access at this point. All that needs to happen is the traffic controller needs to go up to the server, check in and make sure everything's working appropriately. However, if I did have something on this site or a resource that I needed to access, we have two paths. Number one is you can add your primary DNS if this is a, a more of a, a server type site where you have a, a local DNS server on site here, or you'll see after I add my router, which is right here, you can see it's NCX traffic controller POC, I click add, it pulled some data. And then if you notice this checkbox is now enabled or is now uh, uh, removed from being read only access. Mm. And what this would do is if I say, or if I had a resource on this site, I could have the router act as this DNS server. So I don't have to have a coexisting DNS server. The router will say, oh, you're looking for a resource at my site. I can raise my hand and I will answer that DNS request. But again, for our simple use case now, we don't even need to worry about that. You can see all I have to do is click create and all the magic starts happening. So all the configuration of IPsec, GRE, all of the heavy lifting, if I go back and look at my router, you can see the two arrows chasing each other. And that's because what NetCloud Exchange did was push a big chunk of configuration to the device automatically, taking me out of the equation. Huh. The, uh, the other major advantage that we had that, you know, typically when I'm having to set up a VPN connection, there has to be a unique element inside that connection. Typically, we'd say that's the LAN of the device that we're going to connect from. However, one of the major advantages that we have in NetCloud Exchange is we can solve an overlapping IP problem because of some magic we do under the hood by providing an overlay NATed uh, address. And so if I needed to go add a secondary controller, I don't even have to go in and change the LAN IP of this device. All I have to do is run through that add, create, and it will automatically spin up all of those services. Oh, wow. And if I refresh this, you can see that that sync is gone. We're good to go. However, we're also working in a zero trust approach to all of this. So the simple act that I've declared that I care about this site tells me that I have to protect it. So I still don't have access into that traffic controller until I add an access policy. So let's go do that real fast. So that's pretty cool. It's just default deny until you actually add a destination and a path to get there. Exactly, exactly. And because that's the, the foundation of those zero trust principles. Yep. Least privileged access, making sure that we're gonna assume things are bad until we go approve them. And to make an access rule, it's very simple. All I have to do is navigate to my policy section, 
give it a name. For this, I want to make sure that this site has access to my traffic controller, so it's going to be allow. You can see that we have a couple different options in the from, but in this case, you can see that it will populate all those different sites that we saw on the previous screen. But the one I care about is this ninth and main, which is the one I just did. Now, just remember, uh, before you move on, you have to click add and you'll see this little pill populate at the bottom that knows that this site has now been selected for the access policy. And then we had, remember that name resource on the internal, which I can then search for here, which was just that traffic control server. Right. So all I have to do is click add. And for me, because I know that this operates in a top down, I'm just gonna put my rule at the top because it will have no impact on anyone else. I'll click add here, and then you do have to go and commit your changes just in case um, a mistake is made or anything like that. You can go validate that. It will refresh the page and your pending rule will become an active rule. And now the site becomes available through this particular, or I should say the resource becomes available through this particular network. Exactly. So now I've said, hey, this site can talk to the resource in my network that I care about. And if we go back to my traffic controller site, let's just do a quick ping test. Uh, it was, ooh, I can't remember, 10.240.48.110. We will have to oops, source this from the LAN of the Ericsson device. And we should see some successful pings. And there we are. Oh, look at that. Look how easy that is. That was pretty quick. Just the whole, like, going through the creating and then adding absolutely we're not even at 15 minutes on the video and it's kind of like in the olden days this would take a while well and that's even and that's if i had all the information that i needed prior to getting this all set up so when i need to go do my next traffic controller to extend this poc i don't again have to go figure out what lands have i used which ones do i need to remember that are used somewhere else I just say, don't worry about it. I can go add it as a site, let Ericsson take the burden of doing all that complex networking out of my hands. Right. And then does that policy also include like security pieces or yep. any it's other kinds of sort of filters, if you will? Absolutely. So one of the big advantages that our policy has, it is a single policy. So say you want to enhance this network with some of our premium features, you don't have to go learn a new system. It's all in the same pane of glass here. And depending, uh, yeah, and depending on what you want to do, you have all sorts of different options between advanced web filtering. And we'll touch on those in future videos. But again, with this simple use case, I have an IoT device trying to get a connection, a secure connection into my network where I have to either find an alternative to my private network. Maybe it doesn't, maybe the carrier again doesn't work in that area. Or sometimes there's actually a cost associated and I need to kind of reduce that for other projects. Oh, right, right. Because this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this is a wired connection, a wireless connection, doesn't, doesn't matter. It'll depending on how you set up the router and what's a you know primary connection or secondary it'll just go no matter what exactly and there's no requirement for a static ip on on the site side it just will all get through the network and you'll be be happy and secure because that's the other thing is we don't expose anything out on the internet by the nature of that overlay address unless you've been invited and your access policy has been created pretty cool stuff joe wow Really interesting and so simple. Like that's one of the things I've noticed just over the last year being here is how how easy and simple it is for customers to add a hardware, add a network, add a policy, click, 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 and it just starts working. Hundred percent. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure you might be tired of me and my three S's, but those are always what I go back to. It's got to be secure. It's got to be simple. And it's got to be scalable. And that's kind of the ethos of, of what Secure Connect tries to envelop with, with each feature that we build. And we'll wrap with that. Secure, <laughs> simple. Scalable. Say that again? And scalable. Scalable, of course. Doy. Thanks for coming on, Joe. Always nice to see you. And always nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about Cradle Point, 
Ericsson Enterprise Wireless Solutions, VPN, APN replacements, NetCloud SASE, NetCloud Secure Connect, ZTNA, the list goes on. You can certainly visit us at cradlepoint.com. If you got questions, you've seen this video, maybe you got some questions about it, certainly drop some comments in. Be happy to share with Joe. He'll come back and answer himself. I can guarantee that because I know he loves that. And if you enjoyed this video and this channel, please hit that subscribe, like, and share. For my pal, Joe, always good seeing you, Joe. I'm you Peter, too, and we're with Erickson. Thanks for watching.